way to improve yourself is to polish your knowledge and to get insights from a person who has himself an immense knowledge whose judgments while he was in his office were always well received cheating criminal misappropriation and breach of trust where we take the session on comparative study by honorable mr justice kuldeep singh a former judge of punjab and haryana high court so we requested him to take this understanding of concepts so that it can be understood because as a common man you feel that there's very less difference between the two as such sometimes when a common man also says he reads these sections invariably in the social media but they do not sometimes are able to understand the differences in this respect we had requested justice kuldeep singh and as we all said of late we are doing sessions in a bilingual language so that these are the topics morely on which common man also understands and uh, the munsif lawyers and mufsil lawyers are also wanting to understand to jab in cheezon ka samajh achhi ho jaye to samadhan bhi achhi se samajh aa jata hai in cheezon pe zor dene ke liye humne justice kudeep singh se request kari aur inke humne pehle bhi sessions liye inke short is so is it audible somebody has written sound is missing is audible yeah okay uh, he will have to cross check on it and therefore without taking much time we know that it's a weekend and people are willing to hear just to deep sing as such sir over to you thank you vikas thank you beyond la clc for giving me opportunity to share my views ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਦੋ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਜ਼ੀਕਲ ਹਾਰਮ ਇਟ ਮੀਨਸ ਯੂ ਬੀਟ ਸਮਬੋਡੀ ਯੂ ਕਾਜ਼ ਇੰਜਰੀ ਬੋਡੀਲੀ ਇੰਜਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਮੈਨ ਇਜ਼ ਅਗਰੀਵ ਦੀ ਅਦਰ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਓ ਅ ਡੇ ਵੈਰੀ ਕਾਮਨ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਵਾਈਟ ਕਲਰ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮਸ ਇਜ਼ ਕਾਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਹਾਰਮ ਟੂ ਸਮਬੋਡੀ ਇਨ ਬੋਡੀ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਰੈਪੂਟੇਸ਼ਨ it is not a physical harm but many time it is more dangerous than physical harm suppose somebody's property is taken away he is not physically harmed but he is he is a wreck many time he loses everything so a nawa jo trend hai a jo chale hai ki kise da nuksan jehda hai ga financial karo kai tarah de fraud hunde ne internet te fraud ho gaye papers de work de vich fraud ho gaye sa ਤੋ ਇਹ ਕੰਮ ਕਾਫੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਨੋ ਕਿ ਚੀਟਿੰਗ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਮਿਸਅਪਰੋਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਬ੍ਰੀਚ ਆਫ ਟਰਸਟ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਦੇਖਣ ਚ ਇਹ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਰ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਸਲਾਈਟਲੀ ਇਫ ਇਟ ਕੁਡ ਬੀ ਔਨ ਹਿੰਦੀ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਪੀਪਲ ਯੈਸ ਓਕੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਬੀ ਫਾਈਨ ਯੈਸ तो कई बार हमें देखने से ये लगता है कि इनका कोई खास फर्क नहीं है आपस में चीटिंग क्रिमिनल मिसअप प्रिपरेशन ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट बट देयर इज अ मार्क डिफरेंस यू कैन से देयर इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ अ डिग्री ऑफ क्राइम व्हेन द दिस मिसअप प्रिपरेशन इज देयर ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट इज देयर और चीटिंग इज देयर चीटिंग सर्टेनली इट इज अ वेरी हायर फुटिंग इन द क्रिमिनल जूरिस प्रूडेंस where you intentionally or dishonestly cheat somebody you fraudulently cheat somebody so we will take up first way, one by one what is the difference so first criminal misappropriation section 403 jo hai ipc ipc ka wo define karta hai criminal misappropriation ko basically hum ye dekhe कि क्रिमिनल मिसअप्रोप्रिएशन में जो पोजेशन है प्रॉपर्टी की किसी के पास आई है दैट इज लाफुल और उसके बाद उसका माइंड हो गया उसने उसको ही मिसयूज्ड इट आई विल रीड द डेफिनेशन फर्स्ट द डिसऑनेस्टी इज द फर्स्ट रिक्वायरमेंट इफ द डिसऑनेस्टी इज मिसिंग देन द क्राइम इज नॉट देयर इट सेज हु हुएवर डिसऑनेस्टली so word dishonestly that that is that is to need to be noted 
misappropriates or converts to his own use any moral property shall be punished like this and this what is imprisonment maximum is 2 years the aggravated form has more uh, more severe so for like this suppose there are two co-owners one has the right to use that particular article he uses it but then he sells it he subsequently sells it so that selling part that is with this dishonest intention he knows that he is the co-owner suppose horse is there there are two co-owners he both used it but one of them sell it dishonest intention is there that man has dishonestly sold it by representing that he is the sole owner but the possession was otherwise as a co-owner it was legal there was no illegality in the possession but his intention turned dishonest so somebody say somebody body has right to go to friend's house he picks up a book in good faith for reading but then he sells it then sale that sale part when it is sold it is dishonest with dishonest intention it is criminal misappropriation so in criminal misappropriation aapka hai ki possession aapki jo aayi hai that is not illegal that is lawful but subsequently the dishonest intention is there and it is sold now we come to criminal breach of trust as the name suggest it is basically a breach of trust somebody reposes faith in you he trust in you and you breach that trust or like this the definition says here also dishonesty is must the dishonest intention is must if that dishonest intention is missing then there is no criminal breach of trust i will give the example later on. here the section says 405 says whoever being in any manner entrusted with the property here the entrustment is there or dominion over the property is he has got control over the property dishonestly misappropriates he misappropriates like misappropriation early there but it is dishonestly but or he convert to his own use or that property or dishonestly uses or disposes of that property he uses that property or dispose of that property further requirement is that that act dishonest act of uh, converting to his own use or disposing of must be in violation of the direction of the law prescribing the mode in which such a trust is to be discharged so entrustment is there there is a direction that how this trust is to be discharged and that is violated in the misappropriation there is no trust there is no direction how it is to be used or it is but it should be any trust or any legal contract is there suppose it is between the uh, agent and the principal principal give some money to the agent that it should be invested in a particular bond the agent in place of uh, using that money uh, investing money in a particular bond he uses in some other bond dishonestly or convert to his own use he doesn't invest at all so here the direction was there the law prescribed the direction that you do like this or there is a contract to do like this express or implied the contract may may be express or may be implied suppose here the when the principal give money to the agent with the direction it is there is a implied contract that he will do like this there is no written contract which has been made touching the discharge of property or he himself does, does it or he willfully suffers any other person to do it he himself doesn't do it but he willfully suffers any other person to do it that is called criminal breach of trust so from the misappropriation we see here the trust is there it is expressed or implied some legal contract is there so then there are explanations also like in implies provident fund the employer he collects the money for 
depositing in the appropriate fund of the government, but he doesn't deposit it. The money comes to him as a trust. So, वो trust जो उसमें था कि उस money अपने पास वो लेगा लेने के बाद वो उसको invest करेगा. So, वो that trust he he disobeys the direction of law, which requires that money is to be deposited in the government particular government account. Like implies the state insurance fund is also there where the money is directed. I will give some examples. Suppose A is the executor of the will, and the, in the will, the directions are given by the testator that the property is to go in a particular way. The executor he disobeys the direction contained in that will and distributes the property other way, otherwise, or he misappropriates himself, convert to his own use. Or he doesn't protect the property and allow somebody else to misappropriate it. That is also if he allows somebody else, he is he was bound to protect that property, but he doesn't do it. And another example, a where some property is entrusted with a warehouse keeper, with the condition that some amount will be paid as rent, and then when the man wants the, that property will be returned, but the warehouse keeper, he sells that property. He was supposed to keep that property in safe custody on payment of certain rent or uh, charges. But he, in place of keeping it safe custody, he sells it. So that is also criminal breach of trust because the property was entrusted to him. I have already given the example of where the principal and agent relationship is there, and the principal gives some money to the agent to invest in certain bond. Or certain say shares, but he does it uh, invest somewhere else. But here is the uh, you know difference of dishonesty. Suppose the principal gives money to the agent that invest in particular type of bonds. The agent bona fide believes that those bonds are not will not bring profit. He invest money in some other bonds, which accord according to his belief will bring more profit. Here the dishonest intention is missing. He did it in a good faith to protect the interest of the principal. So here that dishonest intention being missing. So it is not a criminal breach of trust. Though if some loss is there, the master may sue him in civil side, but criminal intention is not there. So the core of the this uh, definition is that dishonest intention must be there, and there must be a trust. Which is reposed in a particular person, and he breaches that. Like some revenue officer is there, he collects the money on behalf of the government. So then, then his responsibility is that he is to deposit the money in the government treasury. The money is with him as a trustee. In place of depositing in the government treasury, he misappropriates. He converts to his own use. He uses that money, even for a time. Suppose he was uh, uh, bound to deposit within one or two days, say within two days, seven days, but he uses it, and subsequently after six months he deposited the money. Say after one month he deposited the money, but misappropriation for a particular time is also it is it is a breach of trust. For that the cr crime is complete. So now comes the cheating. चीटिंग एक ऐसा क्राइम बन गया है जो कि आजकल हर एक को डर रहता है कि मेरे साथ चीटिंग ना हो जाए चीटिंग बहुत तरीके से होती है आप किसी का डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करते हैं प्रॉपर्टी की सेल परचेज है उसका आपने कुछ परचेज किया आपको एक चीज बोली वो दूसरी दे दी एंड देन इंटरनेट पर चीटिंग होती है यू आर यू आर फॉल्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन आर मेड टू यू दैट इट इज लाइक दिस बट इट टर्न आउट टू फेक and then cheating is committed so cheating is it cause more harm to you in body mind and reputation also because your money is gone you you got you get stressed you lose finances which you were thinking that it is to be used in a particular way to secure your interest so the definition of cheating which is a, 
contained in section 415 i will read that for your benefit but the offense of cheating is also misused the jo act hai wo cheating mein nahi aata usko bhi guma phira ke log wo cheating mein la ke uski complaint kar dete hain so there is a very thin difference that is misused that i will also come to that the definition says whosoever by deceiving any person sabse pehle deceiving zaruri hai ki that must person must be deceived then after deceiving fraudulently or dishonestly dono hai fraudulently fraudulently or dishonestly jo hai iski definition jo hai wo separate hai fraudulently means section 25 says a person is said to do a thing fraudulently if he does that thing with the intent to defraud but not otherwise dishonestly it is defined in section 24 it says whoso whoever does anything with intention to cause wrongful gain to one person or wrongful loss to another person is said to do that thing dishonestly wrongful loss or gain that is it should be wrongful so the i again coming back to definition by deceiving any person fraudulently or dishonestly induces the person so deceived it says by deceiving a person fraudulently or intentionally and induces that person after that he induces that person who has already been deceived by him to deliver a property to any person not to himself to himself or any other person he deliver that property or consent that any person shall retain the property the property is already with there but he uh, that he by representation fraudulent if he Uh, makes that person to consent that he will retain that property that is also wrongful loss or it says intentionally induces a person so deceived a or form he he in, in intentionally induces a person who has already deceived to do anything which he would not do or omit to do if he were not so deceived उसको कहता है कि उसको ऐसा हालात बना देता है कि वो ये काम एक पर्टिकुलर काम करता है जो उसने नहीं करना था अगर वो डिसीव नहीं हुआ था या वो कर देता है जो उसने नहीं करना था अगर उसको डिसीव नहीं हुआ होता तो उससे भी उसको रॉन्गफुल लॉस हो गई तो दैट इज आल्सो इट एंड फर्दर सेज एंड विच एक्ट एंड मिशन इज लाइकली टू कास वो एक्ट और मिशन जो उसने किया जो उसको डिसीव करके करवाया इज लाइकली टू काजिज it says first is causes or likely to cause determined not done but likely to cause damage or harm to that person it in body mind reputation or property four things body mind reputation or property is said to cheat so the result is that that man suffer loss in say in body mind reputation or property because of those acts which i have discussed i will give the example a person claims that he is a civil servant he goes to the shopkeeper and induces him to deliver certain goods the shopkeeper believing that he is a civil servant he will pay for it later on he delivers those goods but he is not a civil servant he has no means to pay it is cheating another example is that somebody shows to a specimen say of a good that this is the commodity i want to sell but the commodity he delivers you is a different if he knew that it is it is not the same quantity you will not purchase it but he makes you believe that it is the same commodity which is which he has shown to you a sample and make you purchase that that is also cheating further somebody gives you counterfeit currency and purchases something it is cheating suppose somebody gives a bill say bill of exchange or something which for which he has no means to pay and makes other person to deliver the goods 
that is also cheating it is common now that uh, many people they issue a worthless check their account is either closed already closed or they have no money in the account they issue a check and the other man believing that he has issued the check he delivered the goods and when the check is presented it found that the either the account is not there or it is closed or the, there is not sufficient funds at the time of issuance of check so here some difference will come when it will it is cheating or when it is not cheating further that somebody represent that these are the diamonds and these are not diamonds he sells those diamonds representing it diamonds the other person believing that these are the diamond purchase it so it is cheating these are the very common form so making a promise that he will deliver the goods which he has no means to deliver so that is cheating then there is another important aspect of cheating there is an example in the section itself a intentionally deceives z into belief that a has performed a is part of contract say a is he represent to the other that he has performed is part of the contract which he has not performed and thereby induces z to pay the money he represent that he has performed is part of contract it happens in the property dealings that somebody represent that he, he, he is the owner of the property but he is not the owner he produces some uh, title documents which are fake and he makes the other person to pay for that uh, uh, property which is not the ownership of the man selling it so now the which question which is repeatedly coming before the courts is whether a person commits the offense of cheating if initially he had the intention to perform his promise or part but subsequently he turns dishonest suppose a is the owner of the property he wants to sell it and subsequently he changes his mind he says no no i won't sell it now so he refused to sell it this matter has been repeatedly coming before the courts and now it has been well set not well settled by supreme court it says the intention to cheat must be from the beginning not later on suppose a issues a check to the other person and buy certain goods against that check but subsequently he has got money in the account and he withdraws that account or subsequently closes it later on or he stops the payment here there is a very thin difference the courts are required to examine whether from the beginning he had the intention to cheat or at the time when he issued the check he had the intention to perform his part of the contract but later on changed his mind for one or the other reason so it is the this part of this these part of the contracts which are being misused and every act is sought to be brought within the definition of cheating in most of the check bonuses cases that look this man in case of so a stop on payment example a issues a check for supply of certain goods the goods are supplied and on receipt it is found that these are not the same or the person purchasing it has some dispute regarding the quantity of the or quality of the goods he stops the payment of the check here the intention initial intention was not to cheat he has stopped the payment because he has got a bona fide dispute with the seller so here it is not cheating if on the other hand from the beginning he had no money in the account he doesn't wish to pay and makes the other person to supply the goods and then stops the payment of the check fully knowing that there is already no money in the account 
which is sufficient to meet the liability, then it is cheating. So it is a very thin difference, which is required to be considered by the courts and which is misused by the people at large to make a civil case as a criminal case because the people feel that the, in the criminal case they can drag some other person to the court, he will have to apply for bail, he will have to appear on every date. So it takes short, comparatively shorter time than the civil cases. So what they try that they mold the, mold the facts to represent that it was a cheating. Whereas in many cases, it so happens that there is a bona fide dispute and initially there was no intention to cheat. The matter was examined at length in several Supreme Court cases. I will refer to just one case. That is B. Suresh Yadav versus Shrif Babi and others. That is uh, reported in Law Finder. Here the Supreme Court examined as to what are the ingredients of cheating. Supreme Court, while taking into consideration the definition, held that the deception of a person should be either by making a false or misleading representation or by any act or omission and fraudulent or dishonest inducement of that person either to deliver any property to any person or consent to the retention thereof by any person or to intentionally induce that person to do or to omit to do anything which he would not do or omit if he were not so deceived and which act or omission causes or likely to cause damage or harm to that person in body, mind, reputation and property. In this case, the Supreme Court also examined whether the subsequent dishonest intention is makes out cheating. Supreme Court said no. The fraudulent or dishonest intention should be at the time of the making of the promise or representation. So initially when the transaction starts, it is to be seen whether at that time the party who is alleged to have cheated, had the fraudulence or dishonest intention to cheat and induce the person to make the property. So that is the very thin difference between the cheating and some bona fide business transaction which are not covered within the definition of cheating. So now we see that if we compare the misappropriation, criminal misappropriation, breach of trust, and cheating, <clears throat> we find that in criminal misappropriation, the possession of the property is lawful. But the property having lawfully come in possession, dishonestly misappropriates that property. In case of criminal breach of trust, that misappropriation is of course there, but here the investment is there. The property doesn't come into possession otherwise, but it comes by way of entrustment. So when the Property is interested, certainly the person who is interesting the property has some put up some conditions implied or uh, expressed or implied. So that property is misappropriated or converted to use in violation of the direction of the law prescribing how that trust is to be discharged or some contract expressed or implied touching the discharge of such trust. So here the trust is there some their legal liability is there, 
or some contract is there to how the trustee discharge, but that directions are violated. But in case of cheating, the property doesn't come into possession lawfully. The possession of the property is obtained by the person who has committed the crime fraudulently and dishonestly, and that too by deceiving somebody. So by deceiving somebody, he front dishonesty, he makes that person to deliver that property to himself or some other person or do something which he will not do or omit to do, which he will not otherwise do. And that act causes harm to that, causes are likely to cause. It is not that it is actually caused, it is likely to cause damage to the person in body, mind, reputation or property. So the damage to the reputation that is also very important, that is also included. So damage is there. So that, that way the cheating that is at a very higher footing than the other crime put in breach of trust. So then there are aggravated forms of cheating also, cheating by a public servant, uh, by a warehouse keeper, and certainly then these type of uh, cheating by impersonation. So the aggravated forms carry higher punishment than the ordinary cheating. So Vikas, I think that's all on this topic. If somebody has some uh, queries, I would like to reply. Vikas? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is by the relatives present. This is by Mahindran. Sir, relatives present and affidavit in the revenue officer requested them to transfer a property in the name of a brother to his name as his dead brother's wife and children are not aware. He has made many false statements in affidavit to the revenue officers, presents a false complaint containing false statements where one of the three accused had already died three months ago. What action can be taken by the rest of the falsely accused victims on the complainant? Since the complaint is made to the revenue officer, only revenue officer is competent to make the complaint. Then the procedure is there, 195, 340, he is to make the inquiry and then make the complaint. Because the complaint was made to the public servant, so he is, he is to make it. So the, uh, the private uh, that uh, action is barred. But of course, if something is done by that public servant, on the basis of that complaint, which affects that uh, the, the those person affected person, then of course so certainly they can approach the police that they look they uh, have done like this. They made the false representation. The, the fraudulent intention was there, so we have been cheated like that. Then of course they can maintain a independent action. Now Jitendra Pal Singh says whether accused can be prosecuted in the absence of the complainant. Accused can be prosecuted in the absence of the complainant. Of course, the, he can he, he can be prosecuted. Even if the complainant is there, the court requires the evidence whether the crime has been committed or not. Suppose some uh, in it happens that in many cases the complaint is made, the complainant is won over. But if the, there is other, other evidence available that the man has committed the crime, then he certainly he can be convicted. Especially there is an evolution in this Prevention of Corruption Act, where we find that their witnesses, etc. are being hostile. Then also they say conviction, etc. is being done. It, it can be done because in the nowadays, in the uh, uh, this uh, uh, corruption cases, there is a lot of documentary evidence. So the, the documentary evidence is also evidence. Suppose the man is, uh, you know, having uh, the there his bank account or some statements are showing that he acquired much property beyond his known means, or there is some uh, transaction in, in his account which shows that he has uh, he is unable to explain from where he got that much money. So then certainly he can be convicted. And if there is some other evidence to show that some um, documents are there that he has received the money. And of course, 
some people are foolish enough to uh, get the money in bribe and deposit in the bank some people do it or they purchase property with that money some property with that money so even if the complainant is not there the man can be convicted so this is uh, vikas second forged aadhar card of same person got prepared by using forged birth certificate but question arising what is the loss to you or benefits taken by the person who got prepared the forged aadhar card under which section can such a person be booked for cheating or forgery if any making a false aadhar card that is, that is forgery forgery of a valuable security because the aadhar card can be used for many purposes say for the opening the bank account and it is it is a valuable security so whether the actual loss is caused or not it is immaterial once the forgery is done the offense is complete mm-hmm. so he can be tried with the uh, section uh, relating to the uh, forgery of the valuable uh, valuable account that 465 467 47 if he uses that 471 also vivek says whether aiding someone in examination is offense under section 420 if yes then what is uh, what would be considered as a valuable security aiding somebody in exam it is an abetment and when the he the man is liable as an abetter if he is present around that examination center then then he is he is to be tried as as if he has himself committed the crime uh so we have yeah. taken this we know your abetment can be by many means it can be by aiding by conspiracy if somebody is aiding somebody it is it is a abetment and if he is present there then he is liable as if he himself has committed the crime otherwise for uh, abet- for abetment only which carries lesser punishment this is an engineer gives a quotation for the repair work of a police prem- premise prolongs the work for 2 months and the owner of the property also joins hands in completing the repair after completion of work and receiving the service charges the engineer demands one and a half times more remuneration no that is not he because he was doing the work and subsequently this is the what i was telling that is a difference the initial jab usne shuru kiya kaam shuru kiya us waqt uski intention cheating ki honi chahiye agar subsequently uska man thoda thoda wo change hona shuru ho gaya ki isse paise zyada bana lete hain isko delay kar dete kuch karte hain then it is a civil liability अगर उसने कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट फोर्ज कर लिए दैट इज डिफरेंट अगर उसने डॉक्यूमेंट कुछ बाद में फोर्ज कर लिए टू मेक दी क्लेम करने के लिए देन इट इज ए डिफरेंट देन वो फोर्जी में आ जाएगा बट अदरवाइज इफ ही डिले इज दी वर्क वांट्स मोर मनी उसको पैसे ज्यादा मिल जाए कुछ कर जाए तो वो सिविल लाइबिलिटी है इफ द साइकोलॉजिस्ट डज नॉट डिस्क्लोज अबाउट हिज ओन साइकोपैथिक इलनेस एंड इज काउंसलिंग एंड इज काउंसलिंग एंड गिविंग साइको साइकोथेरेपी to the clients is it cheating with the client or a fraud no i don't think it is a fraud if if he has got illness whether it is to be seen whether that is affecting his judgment or not whether that advice that treatment given to him caused any harm to that man in body mind or reputation suppose somebody has got some problem but they are you know the those people who fail in the competitive exam they uh, run very successful academies that doesn't mean that they, they, they if they have failed they they can't give proper advice so if he has it depends upon the uh, nature of the illness there is some you know psychologically this uh, psychological illness is these are very sometimes you find that a uh, um, man there is schizophrenia schizophrenia he, he behaves like a normal man but his judgment is very weak he cannot differentiate ki isme mera fayda kya hai nuksan kya hai wo nahi kar sakta that is a different type of illness but if it is done with the intention that uh, if, suppose he is not competent uh, uh, suppose he is not qualified and he is giving advice then it is of course cheating but if he is otherwise qualified he has got little problem he is taking medicine or like that then it is not cheating but of course if some harm is caused the man can he can be sued on the civil side cheating is basically a criminal act this is by uh, neeraj ansal 
a creditor commits fraud and the borrower approaches the court to seek declaration that it has been defrauded will the bar of surface apply act uh, to the tribunals no that is is a different surface act if is surface act is applicable to the transaction then of course the civil suit is not maintainable then he has to approach the competent authority until unless there is a lot of evidence required that's what the court has developed in the normal if the plaint has been drafted in such a manner in the civil suit then there is a just judgment passed by honorable mr justice ketarpal which says then it will still have the trappings of the securitization act itself the uh, last question mahindran a receipt of rupees 85 lakhs was presented to the court and instantly marked to be disproved in cross examination it was noticed that the receipt contained signatures which are in fact a print out clearly not signed by a pen how can we prove to the po that it's a printing signature of a the dead plaintiff not a signature the how the signatures are to be of course you know today this uh, there is a, the science has developed the handwriting fingerprints they can make out whether it is a printed from the printer or it is signed ink is used so the if the uh, ink is used then of course their marks are there and the expert he can find out that uh, ink is used but in the case of printer it is a different one can make out from the even with the naked eye that whether the ink is used or not he says it was initially uh, disproved uh, it was instantly marked that was not an exhibit now he says how to show that it uh, in fact the marking is the or exhibiting document is immaterial once it is produced in the court it is a forged document then of course the liability is there so the law otherwise says that if the document is uh, exhibited that doesn't mean that it is proved The party can always show that it is not proved in accordance with law, so it should not be read into evidence. Suppose the document is marked, but otherwise proved in accordance with law, so the the document can be read into evidence. Okay. So the, these were the questions. Before we part for the day, uh, since we were initially taking up the session somewhat in Punjabi, so all three differences, if you have to sum it up, how will you sum it up in uh, the subtle differences between the three? Uh, since a lot of people from Punjab are also watching it. in in punjabi or in uh, in punjabi all these three definitions which we were discussing today in in hindi or in which language yeah, uh, in english we have discussed in punjabi or hindi whatever feeling so that the people uh, yeah hindi hindi or punjabi you know if one understand punjabi can understand hindi also misappropriation ek aisi cheez hai ki aapke paas jo kisi bhi property ki possession jo aayi hai that is lawful you are the co-owner or otherwise in a good faith you obtain the possession of that property and subsequently you turn dishonest and misappropriate it sell it i have given many example di thi ki ek suppose ek horse hai uske do co-owner hai ek owner jo hai wo use kar sakta hai usko but use karne ke baad usko sell kar deta hai so his possession as a co-owner was there he had a right to use लेकिन उसने उसको सेल जब कर दिया तो इट इज मिस अप्रोप्रिएशन जो ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट है ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट में इंटरेस्टमेंट इज ऑलवेज देयर को प्रॉपर्टी जो है उसको एक तरह से इंटरेस्ट हुई है आदमी को और उसकी जो डायरेक्शन है कि इसको ट्रस्ट को कैसे डिस्चार्ज करना है देर जे से दीगल रिक्वायरमेंट आर देयर और कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्सप्रेस और इम्प्लाइड इज देयर आई मैंने जैसे एग्जाम्पल दी थी कि एक एक्सिक्यूटर है विल का उसको प्रॉपर्टी उसको विल में लिखा हो के ऐसे ऐसे उसको करनी है तो उसकी बजाय ही डज इट इन ए डिफरेंट वे अलग तरीके से उसको कर देता है वो ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट है या किसी को मास्टर ने एजेंट को पैसे दिए कि वहां पर लगा दो वो वहां पर लगाने की बजाय वो खुद यूज कर लेता है तो दैट इंटरेस्ट इनिशियली देर इज ए इंटरेस्टमेंट एंड देन देर आर ए डायरेक्शन हाउ दी दिस आगे है कि उस ट्रस्ट को डिस्चार्ज कैसे करना है एंड देन डिसऑनेस्ट और फ्रॉड इंटेंशन मस्ट भी देयर बोनाफाइड इंटेंशन से किया है तो वो क्रिमिनल ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट नहीं बनेगा तो सिविल लाइबिलिटी जो बन सकती है जो चीटिंग है चीटिंग में आउट एंड आउट फर्स्ट चीटिंग इज देयर देन फ्रॉड एंड डिसऑनेस्ट इंटेंशन इज देयर दी मैन इज मेड टू पार्ट विद द प्रॉपर्टी 
उसको वो प्रॉपर्टी वो डिलीवर कर देता है उसके साथ धोखा करके वो ले जाते हैं या खुद ले ले या किसी और को दे दे वो हो जाए ठीक या उस आदमी को कोई ऐसा काम चीटिंग की वजह से करवा ले जो उसने अदरवाइज नहीं करना था या वो ना करे जो उसने अदरवाइज करना था एंड उसके बाद जरूरी है कि उस एक्ट की वजह से उसको बॉडी माइंड रेपुटेशन और प्रॉपर्टी में नुकसान हो अगर नुकसान नहीं होता कोई तो भी वो चीटिंग नहीं है क्योंकि वर्ड एंड इज यूज अगर उसको नुकसान नहीं हुआ उसके एक्ट की वजह से तो वो चीटिंग नहीं हुई तो दिस इज दी डिफरेंस पहला थोड़ा सा लाइटर है मिस अप्रोप्रिएशन ब्रीच ऑफ ट्रस्ट में थोड़ा सा हायर आ जाता है उसमें वो इंटरेस्टमेंट हो गई और उसकी डायरेक्शन हो गई कैसे इसको ट्रस्ट को डिस्चार्ज करना है चीटिंग में तो बिल्कुल आउट एंड आउट है कि डिसीट भी किया डिस ऑन इंटेंशन देर प्रॉपर्टी में से कर ली उसको नुकसान भी कर दिया सारा कर लिया तो दिस इज दी बेसिकली डिफरेंस बिटवीन दी थ्री बट देन चीटिंग में एक बात है कि इंटेंशन जो है वो बिगनिंग में बिगनिंग में जब काम शुरू हुआ है उस वक्त एक्ट शुरू हुआ है उस वक्त उसकी इंटेंशन चीटिंग की चाहिए अगर बाद में वो डिसऑनेस्ट हो जाता है तो वो चीटिंग नहीं है दैट इज सिविल लाइबिलिटी है उसकी ये फर्क है यस ओवर टू हाँ जी विकास yes sir it was slightly equal so it was a combination of english punjabi and hindi so i feel that everyone would actually enjoy the session so thank you everyone stay safe stay blessed and we are enamored by the fact that the way justice kuldeep singh made the things made us understand in a lucid manner everyone uh, if not got vaccinated do get vaccinated and at the same time stay safe and do not go outside the house until unless very essential thank you namaskar thank you thank you